Where do you find the Jesus of Easter? You know the risen Lord who has forever defeated Satan and restored us to friendship of God. Yeah, where's that Jesus? I suppose we've all become a little like Jesus' disciples, looking in all the wrong places for the resurrected Jesus. Now, first, they run off to an empty tomb, and, they and then they lock themselves in a room. Now, I imagine it's a really nice room that you could hold church in, looking for Jesus. Now, doubting Thomas, who ought to just be called, like everyone else, Thomas, wants to see proof. He wants to touch the hole in Jesus' side and see the nail marks from the cross. These followers of Jesus, these disciples, are running around looking for the risen Lord Jesus in all the wrong places. They are looking in empty tombs and empty rooms, hoping to find the risen Lord Jesus. But the risen Lord Jesus is not sitting in empty rooms, even in really nice empty rooms. The risen Lord Jesus is amongst the living. But we have become a little like, maybe a lot like these disciples, as we look for the risen Lord in all the same old places, disappointed to find that he is not hanging out in an empty church building waiting for people locked away in quarantine to somehow magically break the quarantine and appear. I do not know how many friends have posted pictures of empty rooms looking for that risen Lord Jesus and being disappointed he is not there. We allow fear to steal our joy and then we start looking for the risen Lord Jesus in empty rooms and empty tombs of life. But Jesus is not there. He has arisen. Now, I get it. Well, I sort of get it. There is a lot of angst and worry, disappointment, fear, grumpiness, whatever you want to call it right now. The grumpiness that we are all experiencing has a technical term, though. Grief. Grief causes all those feelings, anger, angst, worry, disappointment, fear, grumpiness. Yeah, all those are a part of grief. Now, people are used to grief when someone we love dies or when a pet dies. But for most of us, we are not actively mourning the death of someone right now. But all those feelings keep coming anyway. These feelings, this grief, it keeps coming because we're experiencing a sort of death. What we have come to know and to cherish right now, and at least for some of those things, they are real questions about whether they will ever be the same again. Some of them will not ever be the same again. Though what we are experiencing is not a death per se, it is like a death. We miss the comforts and the rhythms of our old lives. We miss the reliability of our old lives. We miss being around the people we care about. We miss smiles and hugs and handshakes. We even miss going to the same buildings that we're used to and that have meant something to us. Who'd have ever thought you might miss a cubicle? We are grieving what was. Now, I spend a lot of time around decidedly churchy people, but even the churchiest amongst us are feeling this grief and are struggling to find the risen Lord Jesus of Easter who overcomes death and the grave. Now, this is not some great moral failing on your part or theirs. This is what grieving what once was is like. We churchy people are struggling with finding the risen Lord Jesus because we keep looking for him in all the wrong places. So we post and we share photos of empty darkened churches pining away for the way things used to be. Or we dress up the buildings and we tap pictures and we post them to say, see, everything is okay. The crisis, the crisis has been averted. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. We complain that things aren't the way they used to be and are not as good as they used to be. And we go on and on about how we can't be bothered to use this newfangled internet thing. It's a fad, you wait and see. And we complain that things are not being done in the church buildings, or the work buildings, or the play buildings, or in the way we are accustomed to having them done. I mean, who can pray or work from home, or God forbid, outside? And so even the churchiest of people are looking for the risen Lord Jesus in all the wrong places. We search in empty rooms or empty tombs. We pretend like things have not been fundamentally transformed, but the Lord Jesus is not here. He has arisen, 
just like he told us he would. Jesus is not locked away in an empty room or an empty tomb. He is arisen. Jesus is amongst the living. This is the thing that we must learn as Jesus' disciples had to. Jesus is arisen, and this changes everything. Jesus is arisen and has destroyed the devil and death. We just have to look for him now where we are amongst the living. Now, it is fine to spend some time in grief. Good Friday and Holy Saturday always have to come before Easter. But Good Friday and Holy Saturday are not the end of the story because Easter has come and Jesus is risen. So friends, where have you found the risen Lord Jesus? Be sure to let me know in the comments where you've seen him and where you're looking for him. And if you need help finding him, leave a comment asking for that help or send us a direct message. Amen.